Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day Gamers, and welcome. So today I'm playing something a little bit different. This is French in Space. I picked this up the other day off Steam, and I thought it was quite enjoyable, so I'm going to share it with you. Now, it is a large-based team shooter in space with large ships that have many different classes and support, and it's a little bit like World of Tanks in some formats, but in the other format, the pace is very intensive and it requires a lot of teamwork. But before we get into it anymore, I'm going to show you some of the ships. So now that we're out of the battle and we're in the hangar, let's have a look at some of the ships that are available to us at default. Now, we have three different factions, three different producers of ships. We've got Titan, we've got a Russian sort of faction, and we have USR as well so usr produced this massive sort of flagship a lot of firepower and a lot of hull sort of strength here but it's quite slow then next up we have the russian sort of faction a little bit faster uh, less hull hit points so it can take less damage and then on the next one we have titan who produces the corvette now the corvette is the support craft and it provides the teammate with medical assistance allowing you to repair in the midst of the battle and this was the ship i found that was the most fun to actually pilot but let's have a look at the tech trees so the tech trees work a little bit like world of tanks or war thunder if you played that you can see we've got different versions or adaptations of the next sort of model of ship we've got reapers and you can see they have this three little stats there we have a six six and an eight and they tell you actually what they do so you've got the red that's offensive um, the blue that's defensive and the eight that is support so how much support you can give to your teammates and the different ones have different sorts of ratings and there is a lot to actually play around with in these menus so if we go back we can find the crew we've actually got a few different crews and i've made my own you can combine these different sort of player cards that have perks that benefit your sort of ship to get the best for your sort of play style another cool little feature but let's hop in and i'll play a little bit more so now that we're actually in the game, we're going to talk quickly about the hood and then we're going to get on with some really cool gameplay. Now the bottom right shows a little bit of a map and each one of these rectangles and squares are different sorts of jump zones. The top and bottom, uh, the top being the enemy base and the bottom being our base. Then there's two sectors on the right that you have to cap. So you see the blue circle and the red circle. If they are capped, you can gain access to the enemy's base that you can cap and win the game. And the middle sector, the G sector, acts as a back door. It becomes capable at different times in the game and you can use Use this to get a quick jump in to the enemy's base as well just a really cool feature and it mixes things up and it means that a team that are on the back foot can go for this middle point and they can turn the game around now the other thing on the bottom is a number of different perks that you can change and equip to your ship now different ships have different perks for instance the ship up on the upper left has a rocket missile perk that's just deploying there and my corvette has a shield on number one number two it has a mobility shot so when fired it'll disable or shut down a component either the engines or the thrusters or whatever i set it to then thirdly up we have the limpet drones these are little drones that are launched from my hangar bay on the side and they attack the ship Four, we have an anti-aircraft array to stop enemy fighters from going in and destroy us. And I have a number of other different settings as well. I've talked about the repair beam, and you can see as we're chasing this little ship down, one of the important factors is to stop it doing damage to my teammates so we can continue the fight. So as I'm putting down fire, I'm also going to have to put down the repair beam on the teammate next door. So you can see the green beam repairing it back up, and it's almost like that ship caused no damage at all. And there it go, it's wiped from the map. So we're going to have to turn these ships around quite quickly and be ready to cap that other point so we can actually jump into Team 1's base. We're going to have to do this quite quickly, but you can see the enemy ships are already jumping in. And this is a problem. You've got quite a short respawn time to quite long depending on the ship or depending on what it did in that lifetime as well. So they can jump back in. And if they jump back in in a pack, they're really deadly indeed. So we've got a ship up there in the top left that needs my repair sort of services. And we've also got this Russian ship launching a lot of rockets down that ship as well. And since we've got so much fire going on them crafts, they're blowing up really easily. But we've still got ships jumping in, preventing us from capping this. And I'm trying to repair that ship, but it's just under too much fire. And I don't think I'm going to be able to maintain the repair. And there it goes. There it blows up. So we're going to have to fend off these ships ourselves with just one or two smaller support craft. We've also got the health dropping on the ship next door to me on the left. So I'm going to also try to get some repair done on that. There we go, put the health back up, and that's probably just saved that guy's life now. A few more shots from that ship would have wasted him. Okay, he's going down really low again, and we just lost a second ship. Just too many players getting stuck in and need to come back for repair. And I'm going to try to flee here, activate my shields if I've got them available. Okay, I can't activate them, and now I'm pulling away. And I managed to blow it up on the escape, but I'm still under heavy fire, so I just need to break it. There we go, shields are activated, and this should give me enough time to try to jump out of this fight because I'm going to lose it. Health is going definitely too low. So we've made it out. 
let's move on to the next ship. Now this next ship we're having a look at is the Russian ship. This is the sort of mid-class one, it's got rockets, it's also got some quite deadly weapons, and it also has this thing called the Blink Drive, and this allows you to quickly jump between positions. You see that little green marker I placed? I can jump between different locations, so I can quickly move around an enemy fleet, fire a few shots, relocate, keep moving now you can see i've also got fighters surrounding me i've activated my point defense and it's shooting them down but the best way of getting away from these fighters is probably to use that blink drive and blink back there before i come under the heavy ship fire now i've completely lost that enemy ship behind this rock so i'm going to come up behind and try to get a little bit more firepower on them now this ship is not as fast it's only got around 10,000 11,000 hit points and at fully upgraded it's a little bit better but I'm still using that jump drive to preserve as much health as I possibly can until my teammates get back here to back me up. I've not got a Corvette on hand, so there's no medical assistance going on. And there we go, another jump drive, and I've managed to escape this situation. I'm going to probably pull around this rock here and re back sort to base and sort out the health of this ship. Just There's so many tactics going on in this game. It's crazy. You've really got to think. You can't take on everyone with your one little ship. And everyone's constantly trying to outplay each other by jumping away, bringing more people in. Now, the final ship I wanted to show you was the flagship. This was their sort of heavy battleship, the tank, if you like to say. And I found this ship really boring to play because all you seem to do is hold down the mouse button and fire thousands of machine guns and rockets at a target. And then a mouse button too, you have a disable button. But it, 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 was just too, it was just too simple for me, really. You can just sit there and absorb firepower, where the Corvette just was so weak that you had to really be thinking smart, launching some missiles from the side port. Just look how much damage that other ship is taking. That's a flagship as well, a really heavy sort of tank. And all my teammates have to focus on that guy to actually do any sort of damage to him at all. Absolutely amazing. You can just see the amount of fire that's going to, into him. Now, overall, I quite enjoyed this game. But I'm going to have to see just how it develops in some early stages.